Ah, that's the, the Volta Redonda one. So let, let us introduce uh, him. Marcelo is the, uh, uh, he's a, a, a professor at the Volta Redonda camp, campus of Fluminense Federal University. Also to goes to SASIS uh, from time to time. Mm -hmm. Hey, hello, hello. Nice hello, to see you. Marcelo, good good to see you, Marcelo. So, uh, Michelle and Rodrigo, Moisés is going to talk a little bit on the Conexão Sociologia Econômica, then you can talk about the, the Rede, you and, and Rodrigo, and then I'll, I'll introduce yeah. Aquan, okay? Yeah. Okay. All set, I'll Moisés? Just, uh, I, I will start the uh, YouTube transmission. Yeah. That's... Well, um, first of all, thank you for coming in to this uh, lecture. It's the first one of a series of uh, lectures we are planning to 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 hold. Uh, ju just a sec. It seems there is a just a sec. Okay, now it's fine. There was a problem because I, I'm transmitting this in the YouTube. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, I was hearing both uh, sounds, the transmission, and there is always a delay to uh, uh, transmit this in in the in the channel. Um, so uh, it's the first of a series of uh, seminar webinars concerning uh, uh, the political economy, uh, a comparative political economy on Asian countries. So we started with, uh, there will probably be two, one, two lectures or two talks on uh, about South Korea. One is by Professor Kwon and the other one is uh, by Professor Michel uh, C uh, from Seneca uh, Academy. Uh, and then well, the other names we we we, we don't have them confirmed. So, uh, and this is an initiative from uh, different people who take part in uh, SASI systematically. So, uh, Cristiano is one of them, Rodrigo, Antonio, and me. And uh, so, it, it, we have three different uh, research groups, uh, but. They are well connected, and we are always uh, doing things uh, together in different uh, conferences, uh, uh, um, not only in Brazil, but also SASE and eventually other conferences. Uh, I think that's uh, uh, our idea here. We are transmitting this uh, in the YouTube. We, we make it available for other people because there were some people, for example, in Germany, it's now 1 a.m., so they told me that it's not, a, it would be very hard to be uh, awake at uh, 1 a.m. To, to attend the, the, the lecture. But anyway, they were interested in receiving the recording. And uh, so that's uh, what I'd like to say. Well, I think. Okay, Cristiano, uh, Cristiano want to say a few words about uh, the research of the network in Rio? Sure. Well, I'm Cristiano Monteiro from Universidade Federal Fluminense. It's a great pleasure to 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 be here with you guys, especially with Dr. with Hyun Kwon for his lecture today. I would like to say thank you to to Moisés and Antonio because they made a great effort to putting uh, this meeting on this time. I hope I can be more helpful <laughs> the next times. I'm sure it'll be time for you. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I think it's great that we are retaking this series of uh, of lectures and talks. We we had a couple uh, very interesting talks with the colleagues from Germany last year. Uh, one at uh, UFRJ. Uh, Rodrigo maybe can talk a little bit about it uh, next. Uh, also one at uh, Fluminense Federal in Niterói. So it's very nice to, to be able to, to be with you, to, to be able to be with you guys uh, here tonight. Thank you very much for the initiative and I hope we can um, uh, go on with our exchange, uh, both uh, uh, within our Brazilian groups and also international ones. Thank you. 
Rodrigo, you want to say a couple words? Yes. Uh, well, first of all, I'd like to to uh, to thank you, Professor Kwon, for for being here with us. It's uh, it's a great pleasure to host you here, and I also would like to to thank to Moisés and, and Antonio for all the effort they made for for bringing you here. Uh, uh, one, I think one one thing, one important thing to mention is that this is. Uh, part of uh, a series of initiatives that this specific network we, we are building together since uh, last year. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the Economic Sociology Network in Rio de Janeiro uh, is, is promoting right now. Cristiano has said before that we had two meetings uh, last year, uh, one in the uh, Fluminense Federal University, the other one at my university, uh, Federal University of Rio. And this network is comprised also with uh, Cândido Mendes University, where uh, Antonio comes from. Uh, uh, what we try to do uh, is to uh, building a, a, a small node. It's still emerging right now in Rio because economic sociology, uh, it's a vibrating field. Uh, there's at least 20 years people doing economic sociology in Brazil. And right now we have the conditions together uh, to, to bring together uh, a few scholars doing, doing research on similar topics. And of course, to have you here, Professor Kwon, is, uh, is something that builds up uh, our, our work, the, the things we are trying to, to put together. Uh, thank you. It's, it's, it's just that. Well, thank you. Thank you, Rodrigo, and thank you, uh, Cristiano and uh, Moisés. I just want to compliment you know, the, the network just to give uh, Quan some information. We had two professors, uh, Professor Andreas Noke from uh, Frankfurt Goethe University, which is a contact from uh, Moisés, who talked about Verizon Capitalism last year. And then we also one of his students, Michael Shedlick, who talked about uh, Verizon Capitalism and Innovation in Brazil. And the idea of bringing you know, foreign speakers is like in a way to also to, uh, to open up a little bit the debate in Brazil and then also open up to new perspectives and new frameworks, uh, both about Germany as well as, uh, as Korea. And, and we love you too. You're also a specialist in Germany political economy. You know, so hopefully you have another occasion for you to go, to go back to that at some point and have you talk to us about that too. Uh, so the idea is so we can uh, engage you know, with a broader conversation with other especially in the comparative political economies you know, within the economic sociology. You know. In the specific site, I don't know, it's good, the specific cycle that we kind of designed for 20, 2020, 2021 is exactly you not know, to focus on comparative political economy in Asia, you know, to bring you know, scholars from Asia. And as Moisés said, you know, probably the next speaker at the end of uh, November will be uh, Professor Michel C from the Scenic Academy. And then later on, you might have a uh, professor from Australia National University, you know, John West, talking about the political economy of Asia and bring others you know. So the idea so we can engage in this, uh, in this uh, conversation and so we can also develop, you know, let's say more grounded and better you know, comparative comparisons between our, between our two regions <laughs> and bring you know, different frameworks because of course there is a lot of, uh, I think the background is there's a great interest in Brazil about of course the Korean experience. <laughs> There's a lot of misleading ideas about Korea too. And I think that your, your talk is gonna help us you know, uh, understand better you know, what, uh, what's the real trajectory of uh, Korea and make uh, understand better the, what are the, the factors behind you know, the uh, developmentalism in Korea and try to dispel a lot of uh, false notions and uh, let's say simplistic ideas about Korean development and Korean developmentalist state in Brazil. So it's a great honor you know, to have you here, Professor Hyun Ki Kwan. Just to make a brief introduction to everyone, uh, Professor Kwan is a uh, Oops, sorry, I missed the biography here. Uh, professor Kwan is a professor of political science, uh, Department of Political Science and International Relations at Seoul National University. His areas of interest are in, are in comparative politics, political theory, comparative political economy, and European politics. Uh, he holds a PhD from the University of Chicago with uh, having as advisor Gary Harrigal, who is also my colleague at MIT. And he's well known by his uh, work on uh, comparative political economy of uh, advanced industrial economies. And he has published two references book about the theme, one about Ireland, the politics of social facts 
in the era of globalization, evolution of Irish social consultation model, which was published in Korean uh, by the Humanitas editor in 2014, which was a winner of two uh, prizes, the best book of the year nominated by the Kore Korean Political Science Association in 2015, and the excellent book of ba basic science by the National Academy in 2015. And his other book is about Germany, fairness and division of labor in market societies, the comparison of US and German automotive parts markets, which was published in 2004. Recently, Professor Kwan has been studying the responses of uh, South Korea to globalization. He has published very, two very interesting and very instigating articles, uh, varieties of globalization, national economy, Korea's experience from a comparative perspective with uh, Kyung uh, Mi King which came out now with the Journal of International Relations and Development in uh, September, 2020. And uh, in a couple of years back, you know, he published the state's role in globalization, Korea's experience from a comparative perspective in politics and society in December, 2017, again with his colleague, Kyung Mi King. So it gives me great pleasure you know, to, uh, to have you know, uh, Professor Kyung Ki Kwan speaking to us tonight. You know, and uh, we've been uh, bumping uh, to different sizes and, uh, in the projects together and, and uh, I had the pleasure to meet him personally also in Korea last year. So it gives me a big pleasure that uh, he accepted our invitation to open our comparative political economy in Asia cycle. So Professor Kwan, you have the floor. Yeah, you have can you hear me? You have five minutes and I'll thank you <laughs> for having us. Yeah. Uh, I think okay. everyone should shut off and other microphones and videos so it will be easier to focus on Professor Kwan. Thank you. I appreciate uh, your invitations. And uh, if you have any problems, get to uh, let me know that any listenings or I mean, some problems in, in sound. Anyway, uh, I really thank you for Antonio's invitations in this great uh, conference. Uh, well, like I said, the, uh, this book, uh, I hope uh, this is uh, for my, uh, I mean, uh, first book in Korean uh, uh, capitalism. And also this is the first time uh, to present my book, uh, which will be published in uh, coming uh, 2021, uh, early. Anyway, let's see. Uh, may, uh, just, I, I, I beg a pardon, last night I, I think about too much things uh, and uh, I booked too much other things. Uh, I my sleeping was very problematic. The last night, uh, do me a favor that if I have any problems in presentations, uh, and uh, let me just more uh, slowly uh, and uh, and some moving slow. <laughs> anyway, uh, let me start here. Uh, Actually, uh, let me give you one more note. As you as you see the, my CV, the, actually my uh, scholarly experience started from Western European uh, uh, and American uh, capitalism studies. So my PhD thesis uh, dissertation is all about uh, the comparison between Germany and America U.S. American uh, political economic system, uh, which we republished in 2004. Anyway, so you know, I moved to, uh, maybe I think 2009, maybe. Uh, since then I have started, and then this is the, uh, the recent outcome. Uh, my next move will be uh, historically more upward, uh, Surely, comparatively, uh, probably Latin America in the formation of uh, capitalism and how they are differently uh, established, uh, different style. Um, I'm tracing back uh, historically. That's my second uh, job. Uh, anyway, here uh, I would like to answer several questions. Uh, first, uh, let's see, uh, let's see, uh, let me give you just a brief, uh, some summaries of Korean uh, loca capitalism locations. Uh, let's see. 
uh, if you have some uh, uh, oh I have a problem <laughs> uh, let's see here uh, uh, let me give you some uh, can you see the, uh, the table? Antonio, can you see the table? Yes, yeah, you can see it. Oh, okay. Maybe uh, figure three will be uh, the give some uh, grand pictures. This is, uh, I, I made it uh, uh, thanks to my friend, uh, Ji Hong Yi. This is the, uh, uh, the, the uh, GDP per capita incomes. But a problem, I, I mean, the main thing is the percentile ranks. So the 100% ranked 100 countries, if we rankings uh, from 1965, in the sense of the per capita incomes, Korea, you see the dark uh, KOR is just uh, almost <laughs> the bottom line <laughs> rank uh, like tens. But here, they uh, grew very rapidly through the, until 19, uh, 2015. So almost 80s. If you see the, uh, sure, USA, uh, almost a 10, uh, one, one, 100, but I mean, up and down, up and down, and then uh, 90, 92, 95. Let's see, Argentina. Argentina is, uh, you see the uh, starting 1965, uh, almost 80, and then uh, <coughs> in 1985, or bottom, and then keep, keep almost the 70, so almost uh, like this, uh, uh, yeah, a little bit. And India, uh, India is actually the, is uh, one of the examples of the developed countries, developing countries, uh, main, uh, the UN uh, developing uh, agency focused on uh, and other political economists uh, focused on try to, I mean, show oh. their own uh, theoretical uh, issues, but uh, still they are very uh, similar things. Anyway, uh, what I'd like to say is the, uh, um, let's see, um, first, the question, first question is why and how has South Korea has been able to sustain, achieve the, such kind of long-term sustained economic success from 1960 to 19, uh, 2010s. Uh, almost if, for example, in 1970, uh, 1960, Korea's uh, per capita income is almost uh, below $100. Uh, but uh, right now, uh, in, in the sense of 2000, uh, uh, 2018, it's more than uh, 30,000. Uh, so, and Korea rapidly and very long terms, very high growth, and also uh, very successfully industrialized. Right now, the Korea is a very uh, highly advanced. I mean, in 1965, almost nothing. Uh, after that, uh, right now has uh, industrialized based on indigenous uh, companies, uh, their own indigenous companies, because and also very different sectors, highly advanced, uh, highly uh, knowledge intensive industry. I mean, how Korea achieved such kind of economic success and, and industrializations. That's the of first questions. In this question, uh, let's see. Uh, in this question, uh, mostly the existing prevalent theory is there's the first neoliberals and uh, free market. They, that's because the free market uh, system. That's not true uh, anyway. And the other one, the, which is prevalent uh, developers state literature gained ascendancy in 1990s, late 1980s and 1990s. Uh, they, uh, they got some point, yeah. 
uh, I mean, true, the, Korea has a, the, I mean, very state guided or state initiated uh, developmental styles. That's the true uh, in, in the sense of neoliberals. Nevertheless, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm arguing with uh, uh, not only the neoliberal, uh, but also developmental state or institutionalist uh, approaches. Uh, they are focused on particularly the developmental state uh, literatures are focused on the, 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 the some kind of elements of uh, developmental state, uh, uh, the uh, such kind of a, uh, stringent Weberian uh, state, uh, strong state, authoritarian state, or sometimes very cohesive, single rationality to discipline uh, private uh, companies. Uh, that's, the, that's their, I mean, argument. But uh, my argument is both, there, there, there's a, some kind of tensions between not only uh, neoliberal and, and but also the uh, DS literature. Uh, the first thing is the uh, we cannot say I'm, I'm arguing that we cannot say that just one some kind of element or not. And secondly, uh, even under highly advanced uh, complex capitalist system, and also under globalization era active state role still needed uh, for the very successful economic uh, development and economic growth. And third, more important thing is uh, for the economic growth in such a long time period, organizational flexibility is more important. I mean, we, I mean, you cannot say any one single recipe to economic growth. The more, I mean, unexpected, uh, challenging environment and, and situations, they have a more different, I mean, uh, recipes or strategies of, for the economic growth. They have to develop or just very pra pragmatically. First, how could it possible? It is because the uh, elite competitions or contests uh, I mean, I'm not arguing that all, every, every uh, elite competitions or conflict is good for the economic growth. Uh, some con under some conditions, I mean, conflicts and, and competitions should be uh, reserved or coordinated. Uh, in such a situation, uh, elite competitions uh, and flexible, I mean, uh, adjustment is very excellent to economic growth. We can we cannot say a priori. Uh, I mean, bureaucratic competence cannot guarantee. I mean, any I mean economic success, uh, which is accounted for by, as you see, the the development state literature. Uh, and second, I mean, another my key question is uh, a little bit smaller uh, question. Right now in 2010s, uh, from early 1960s or 70s, mostly DS literature and, and also other neoliberals and, and even, um, I mean, ha, ha Jung Jang, uh, very traditional developmental state theorist in Korea focused on very uh, 1970s, uh, the classical developmental state, uh, like under Park jong era. And then comparison with this period uh, right now, they are saying uh, Korea is not, not anymore developmental state. Uh, I'm arguing with this. I'm arguing against the this kind of uh, argument. Korea still, uh, the state role is very different from Anglo-Saxon uh, American uh, style. They are very strategically 
uh, industrial and economic, uh, and also for other uh, other department, also very strategically focus on uh, development developmentalism. Uh, U.S. The, as you see the uh, state role, they may be intervene, but a very macroeconomic stability like a monetary system and also uh, financial uh, styles. But Korea has a very different uh, actions. So the question is, to what extent Korea has system has changed? I'm arguing uh, Korea uh, does not converge toward uh, neoliberal Anglo-Saxon style the free market system and neoliberal uh, state, uh, neutral state, a very, uh, I mean, select uh, inter interventionist roles, even though they changed tremendously. Uh, uh, another thing is that, so I, I'm arguing that Korean state, Korean capitalism still uh, state interventionistic, very strategic interventionistic uh, uh, capitalism. Uh, I, I don't say just a developmental state or state-led capitalism. Uh, I don't know the, how can I <laughs> uh, name uh, uh, much better, but uh, I, I'm using just a traditional uh, term. So, uh, but uh, but change, they changed the very authoritarian styles and also very selectively, and also more things that the strategy of, of development, uh, economic development is very changed uh, and governing system also changed. Class lines changed a little bit. And particularly I'm focusing on uh, state roles, for example, uh, in 1970s, until 1970s, uh, classical Korean developmental state focused on nurturing uh, very large national champions like Samsung, Hyundai, Daewoo. And so they are mobilized uh, domestic and foreign capital and then funeraling very few uh, companies, excluding whole other, you know, small companies. So disregarding small companies and part suppliers, uh, I mean, but they are just focusing on this building each industry, a shipbuilding industry, automobile industry, and electronic industry, whatever things. I mean, we need, I mean, Korea need, uh, and then after, 1970s, they are slowly move uh, backward integrations. They are focusing on more nationalized path supplying, but uh, still, they, which is not materialized until uh, 1980s uh, or late 1980s and 1990s. Anyway, uh, so my another question, a uh, big question is, how can you understand uh, the indigenous changes of institutions or economic regimes, which is very controversial, as you know, that uh, very, uh, the institutionalism uh, and old institutionalism and new, I mean, rational choice institutionalism, uh, sociological institutionalism, and blah, blah, blah. I'm more pragmatic very uh, constitutional, uh, as you, you know, the Gary Harrigar's style is more, we may say uh, discursive uh, maybe, uh, institutionalism, but a more, more programmatic. So uh, I am would like to uh, offer, uh, I think most, almost all scholars, whether they are neoliberal or uh, developmental state theorist or institutionalist, uh, when they uh, analyze uh, the current Korean uh, capitalism or other other countries' capitalism, they try to change exclusive relation. They try to focus on exclusive uh, relations. First, one is the uh, if they focus on change, they try to emphasize change. They try to dis 
disregard or put, put it down <laughs> the continuity, past dependence. I mean, institutions that emphasize past dependence uh, and based on many reasons, uh, ch resistant to changes, le historical legacies or re historical remnant or take for granted, socialist institutions that emphasize take for granted uh, uh, spirit. I mean, uh, recent uh, great books. I, I like the books that uh, Turbon's, uh, Elizabeth Turbon's 2016 Cornell books, uh, like developmental mindset, which is based on Korean developmentalism. Uh, they're arguing like, uh, Korea, why they are continuing developmentalism? Because they have developmental mindset. <laughs> but uh, I, in some sense, I agree. But on, on the other hand, I strongly oppose my, my ideas, my books. Uh, I mean, the, the strategy or mindset is continuously, re I mean, changing or just based on elite competitions. When I say elite, Normally, uh, within the key industrial uh, department organizations, the, I mean, uh, Ministry of Industry, the former name is Min Ministry of uh, MCI, Ministry of Commercial and Industry, which is the, in Park Jong-hee era and, and John Duan era in 19, until 1980s. After that, they are changed. Korean department uh, changed a lot, uh, I mean, in the same department. So the MCI too. I mean, uh, some people uh, say the uh, EPB, the uh, Economic Bureau, let's see, <laughs> EPB, Economic Planning Bureau, which is very famous in Korea, uh, Korea and not only in, in Korea, in other countries the, uh, who they are, uh, uh, they are studied in Korean development uh, state. Uh, like uh, Japan's MITI and Korea EPB, and also, uh, let's see, other countries, the very similar, uh, the pilot agency in Korea. Uh, so that when uh, EPB closed down in mid, mid 1980s, uh, people are, uh, early 1990s, people are saying, Korea, no more developer state. No, that's not true. So EPB and MCI, I mean, the other name is the Minister of uh, Industry. And also they are competing each other so different perspective. And mostly EPB have upper handed originally in 1970s. Uh, let me say a little bit in details uh, if I have time so in chapter, uh, each chapters. And, and finally, my, key argument is uh, this kind of institutional, uh, I mean, elite competitions incur endogenous changes uh, of continuous changes that different state. And also more important thing is this kind of elite competitions and, and flexible adjustment, institutional adjustment is, is key cause for institution, I mean, flexible adjustment to the, I mean, emerging, newly emerging challenges in uh, international and domestic political economic conditions. Let's see, uh, this is my broad, <laughs> broad uh, uh, argument and some kind of tensions. Uh, uh, and let me briefly uh, say, uh, the each chapters. First, the chapter two and chapter three is a kind of a, a locating Korea, Korean capitalism, historically and comparatively. So uh, in chapter two, locating Korea from comparative perspective means uh, Korea still, I mean, uh, very state guided, state initiated capitalism uh, until recently. Uh, which is in comparison between uh, very social uh, cooperatistic style of uh, Germany and the other way is the uh, American style. Particularly the 
uh, in these chapters that I direct emphasize not only the different uh, patterns of uh, globalizations, uh, also I would like to argue in comparison with uh, Anglo-Saxon American uh, style uh, liberal state system, uh, I mean, versus Korean uh, very active states, active roles. For example, the, in globalization, as you see the, in production system, uh, the existing, uh, I mean, traditional uh, domestic uh, made part, skill, labor, and, and R&D, or mostly domestic uh, based, uh, domestic made, made, and then export the styles or domestic consumptions. But uh, based on, on I mean, changing these systems, the very global production system network. So the, uh, they organize parts and skills and labors and, and, and very kind, bunch of kind of element, input element. Uh, they organize, recombine across national borders. In such a situations, some countries, new liberals are very optimistic. They are very, I mean, you know, uh, let's say a uh, win-win scenario. <laughs> so the based on comparative advantages, uh, the developing country and advanced uh, uh, capitalist countries, they are win-win. But uh, mostly the even advanced countries, uh, their uh, national cooperation, indigenous corporations, and they, they globalize. Some countries are very, uh, industrial hollowing out or industrial demise, uh, declines. But some countries upgrading or, or more highly uh, high-tech advanced uh, upgrade, they successfully. Why these things happen? I'm arguing uh, this is based on the uh, mostly MIT, uh, Susan Berger uh, and American, uh, Michigan, uh, uh, MIT, and Harvard Business uh, uh, schools that they are, uh, they are arguing industrial commons. Even, I mean, uh, I mean, this kind of a very easy flowing element or industrial element, some countries, they gather together and coordinate uh, industrial commons. So the, uh, through it, this kind of, very bunch of different uh, excellent parts, suppliers and banks, uh, and also, you know, the excellent skill labors and this kind of, uh, you know, uh, industry commons, which cannot be made by, I mean, cannot be owned by own single, even very big, big, large corporations cannot own these whole things. They have to share. Based on this industry commons that they can innovative, they can be innovative and they can be grow very excellently. And even developing countries, they need this kind of things. So they attract, not only attracting the foreign uh, companies, but also they have a more collective capabilities to, to be innovative. So uh, to, uh, Upgrading or forming this kind of industrial commons is, is kind of a collective action problems. Uh, so the uh, state can make uh, much better than nurturing this industrial commons. And also uh, social economic coordinations like uh, Germany, they can, they can do this. But uh, free market system have a more problematic. So as you see the, uh, this, uh, Let's see, uh, can you see the, uh, uh, let's, uh, can you see the, the uh, I mean, here, US, Germany, Japan, Korea, yes. they- Yes, I can see uh, it. Yeah, yeah, okay, figure two. This is the, uh, from two, uh, country comparison, high technology trade balance, the 2000 to 2015. The Korea and USA from the Mexico and Japan and Deutsch, uh, Germany. If you see the Mexico and, and very problematic US, very 
from uh, since 19, uh, 2008, uh, as you see the financial crisis. Uh, and, and then there has big problems, manufacturing in US and also high tech uh, trade balance is tremendously deficit. Uh, and Korea and, 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 and Germany has a little bit sustained. They have still, I mean, very high tech uh, trade balance is very good, uh, excellent sustained uh, and develop their uh, manufacturing system. Why? I mean, not, Germany and Korea has a different styles. Uh, they have more, Germany has a more, you know, trade associations uh, and, and trade unions and works council. And they, I mean, and, and so, social institutions, and, you know, from, Ho from Hofer uh, institutions, because they, I mean, more industrial commerce, they nurturing more industrial commerce. Uh, that's the way of uh, German uh, social coordination system. Korea has more, you know, in, in, in the backseat state, very detailed or intervened in this coordination system. Anyway, this, uh, this means, uh, I mean, I just say, even in a uh, very highly advanced uh, complex uh, capitalist system and also very highly globalized uh, situations, still uh, state, states active role in nurturing industry commons, uh, which is very different, very old authoritarian exclusive, exclusive intervention style in 1970s in Korea, a very different. Uh, so they changed this, Things. So chapter three, how, I mean, they change this kind of uh, strategy style, strategy of development, and then, uh, you know, the governing system, class alliance, and, and also palace instrument, palace method. So after that, chapter four, I'm starting here, I mean, Korean capitalism, how do they starting their things? How many? times right now to have. Anthony, how many times do I have? Antonio, how many times do I have? About uh, 18, 20 minutes. 18, 18 20 20 minutes. minutes. Okay, let's see. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, chapter four from right now, uh, we're starting 1960s start and then I'm moving toward the, until uh, chapter eight, uh, until recently, uh, how established Korean development state, and then change the moving toward based um, through elite competitions. I try to uh, make it sure and try to show in detail. And chapter four, that's the very, I mean, you know, uh, most scholars, uh, who studied Korean uh, capitalism know about Park jang classical developmental state. But uh, neoliberal, first, neoliberal emphasize 1960s Korea is liberal, very free market. So that's excellent growth. 1970s, nine, what happens 1970s? 1970s, uh, uh, heavy chemical industrialization which is initiated by a uh, very strong hand of Park jong authoritarian uh, pushes uh, in 1972. Uh, after that, they put in a lot of money in gigantic uh, <laughs> heavy industry building uh, each industry. So uh, neoliberal uh, or uh, classical, neoclassical economists uh, uh, emphasize 1960s. 1970s is a failure, problems <laughs> like that. But a uh, developed state, totally opposite. They, I mean, Korea, why developed uh, very excellently developed state? Developed state is 1970s. But uh, I'm arguing here. Uh, Korean style developmental uh, model uh, is established in 1960s, particularly 1970s. What is Korean uh, 
uh, developmental style you know, characteristic is uh, you know uh, like uh, very highly input oriented growth strategy by mobilization of domestic and foreign capital, and very exclusively nurturing uh, the uh, national champions. And also, very important thing is export orientations. Export orientation is very important thing. Is why because the uh, that's the uh, very different styles. Actually, Korea also started. Even Park Jong-hee started uh, the their industrialization in uh, heavy-handed uh, state interventionism. But uh, that's the very old style uh, ISI. Uh, ISI uh, imports uh, substitution uh, industrializations, not uh, export oriented industrializations. Uh, so uh, this is very similar to Latin America uh, and also India uh, at that time. Uh, so uh, this thing is uh, original developmental state is established 1960s uh, means actually I'm uh, has very, uh, I mean, sharp tension with uh, the many uh, DS uh, scholars who argue uh, that Korean developed state originated from uh, Japan uh, in the colonial era. But that's not true. Why? Because you know, in, we, if we received the whole everything, yeah, I mean, the traditionally we have uh, some uh, remnant or historical legacies. But uh, we cannot say uh, the military state started from uh, Japanese era, because as you see the 19, we, I mean, uh, 1945 and 1948 established uh, in, in independent Korean uh, government. Uh, and then Park jong hee started uh, 1961. So more than 10 years, the Sung Man Lee ruled Korea. He has very strong-handed and very uh, highly uh, strong, I mean, uh, uh, institutional uh, powers to this. I mean, if he have, uh, he have a developer mindset, uh, he can uh, use this kind of strong powers uh, to discipline uh, private capitalists, uh, but uh, he did not do that. And, and normally, Sangman Lee era is a very predatory uh, period. And, and even uh, Park Jong hee uh, gained, um, I mean, seized the power. The early, uh, early times, um, maybe one or two years, uh, very critical point, he had a, a very strong ambitions of developmentalism because they have, like, he does not have. A, he didn't have any uh, political legitimacy. I mean, because the uh, political, I mean, coups, uh, he, military coups, he achieved the, the power. So he tried to legitimize, uh, uh, he wanted to legitimize his own powers based on economic development. But uh, very strong, very powerful, so-called revolutionary uh, military uh, officers I mean, used academic professors, uh, economic professors, uh, try to develop a uh, very ISI based, uh, very indigenous style, independent, uh, very <laughs> autarkic, complete set of uh, economic system. But uh, they failed, totally failed. 1962 uh, is very prompt and also, there is a very big problems with the U.S. Uh, and foreign uh, economic relations. After that, uh, economic bureaucrat, uh, the uh, minister of uh, uh, EPB, the Economic Planning Bureau, and also uh, MCI, Ministry of uh, Commerce and Industry, sported changing very pragmatic uh, lines against the uh, military style, the ISI. Uh, and also they try to develop the other strategies, very, uh, very highly input oriented, which is 
morally, morally based on EPV. And also MCI, uh, MCI, the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, try to develop export-oriented style. This is very controversial. So who developed this kind of export-oriented industrializations? I figure out uh, that's the very uh, happened to find out through the practice and failures, uh, try and errors by MCI. And also MCI take the course. Export is the is the our survivor strategies. And also export, uh, growing export means a growing growth of the our country, economic, economic growth, and also at the same time, MCI's power. <laughs> MCI power growing. So they are, I mean, devoting their whole organizational powers, uh, organizational sales, sales uh, I mean, advertisement and, and whole and controlling or other things, the uh, private uh, industrialist. But still, upper hand has EPB in 1960s because that, you know, economic development is in 1960s, the most important thing is capital. Because Korea have a, have a shortage uh, at, uh, at the capitals. So, uh, they need a lot of money. I mean, try to borrow for other countries and try to mobilize domestic savings and mobilize all this uh, in some sense very, uh, I mean, systematically planning to put in the, the their planning, the, the workable uh, the industries. Uh, but, uh, but still, I mean, they try to, uh, I mean, EPB uh, and MCI compete for legitimacy and authority, particularly in contest of President Park Jung is uh, trust, and because that's the power. So, but uh, 1970s uh, is changed. Heavy industry uh, is uh, by the MCI's work. Actually, the uh, the the four four main industries like uh, Park Jung Hee tried to build backward industry that like uh, you know, 1960s main industry is textile industry in Korea, uh, so they are very consumption oriented and exported, and but a uh, problem is textile industry uh, and, and clothing industry need materials, so that they need, we need a uh, we need chemical industry and, you know, or the backward uh, integration part. MCI, the Minister of uh, Commerce and Industry, proposed this kind of ideas. And also, uh, another problem is the uh, Korea has, as you see, the, uh, the North Korean, North and South Korean security issues. So the, the uh, Park Jong Hee uh, tried to develop the heavy uh, arms. Uh, industries. Uh, so, but uh, in 19, late 1960s, uh, 1970s, uh, Park Jung Hee tried to heavy uh, industries to develop arms, which is controlled by, I mean, by EPB. But EPB focused on attract, attracting just uh, foreign capitals. And also, EPB. On the other hand, EPB tried to exclude <laughs> exclude MCI because, but uh, MCI had a more you know anchored in real uh, private industrialist. Uh, so they have a big problems, and also, so they, every time they compete, fight each other's um, every issues, even sometimes in front of uh, you know president. Park Jung Hee, that they brief and compete, uh, which proposal is better than uh, I mean the other. So up, up and down, up and down. But uh, uh, EPB had an upper hand. But uh, in nineteen uh, early nineteen seventies, the originally the EPB had the initiative, the, the heavy chemical industry development, but uh, they failed. 
they confessed, oh, we cannot do this. Park Jung has very despaired. And then at this point, MCI take the opportunities. We can do this. So they suggest another. So after that, MCI men occupied uh, Blue House. Blue House means like a, a American, uh, US American, the White House, uh, like a president's uh, residence. So the, uh, they occupied the secretary of the economic secretary and then another heavy industry, uh, the coordinator bureaus. Uh, one chair all or one chair, uh, he's, uh, he, he coordinates for everything. This is, a, they put in the almost all Korean uh, capital, almost 60% put in the heavy industry, heavy and chemical industries. But this is very problematic over investment. 1978, uh, slowly there's a, the problems emerged uh, over investment. So the late 1970s, uh, the crisis emerged. So continuously, EPB lost the power. And then through 1970s, they proposed, they tried to. Uh, Catch ups, <laughs> resumes their powers on, 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 on voice. So they suggest a liberalization and this over expansions problems and, and criticize MCI. But uh, at that time, Park Jung is still sided with, uh, with uh, MCI. And then after that, upside down again, Park Jung assassinated. After that, uh, another coup, military coup, John Duan, since 19, uh, he seized the power 1980 uh, through 1987. So in this period, you know, in, in first part through 1970, uh, 1983, uh, the basic framework is changed. The main key man is Kim Jae, he's, he's EPB man. He's a very uh, uh, American uh, economist uh, in, in US uh, university trained, the very monetarist. And, but uh, strange thing is that he is a very, uh, never dress his developmental ideas, uh, which is different in Mexican uh, uh, American economic uh, trained uh, economist like monetarist. He also, you know, uh, liberalized more, I mean, upper-handed. I mean, he tried to focus on economic ecosystem and in, in current terms, uh, try to change it, not an exclusive funeraling home. I mean, input-oriented strategy. He tried to change input-oriented strategy toward more, you know, highly value-added, more economic system and our state uh, role also should be more broad environment interventions, you know, ecosystem, industrial, industrial ecosystem, uh, they try to deal with this one. But uh, uh, he died in 1983. Uh, after that, MCI was a very, I mean, <laughs> suffered from uh, victims uh, or, or, you know, the whole they, they scapegoated uh, in 19, uh, early 1980s, but uh, they resumed their legitimacy through the crisis of export in Korea. You know, in Korea still we have a, if we, uh, Korean uh, very export oriented. So the export problems, then Korean economic problems. So, uh, I mean, Korean economic problems that they try to emphasize export encouragement, then MCI regained. But slightly different situations in 1980s that under, you know, key uh, new, newly established industrial department. Here, EPB and also MCI also, you know, the uh, based on the 
developmental strategy of focusing on electronics. Uh, Kim Jae-ik, the EPB man, focused on this is gross engine, another new gross engines, electronics. So, and he uh, figured out telecommunications that is very important things. Uh, and so then, you know, post office man, like a department of communication and post, they gained or changed their identity toward industrial agency and developed new blueprint. In, initially with, uh, with, with uh, their own, you know, MCI collaborate, and then slightly they developed their own voice. I mean, still they have a very strong uh, voice, like uh, even though they changed their names, Minister of Future and Minister of Future and Future Strategies and, and other department, very important department, uh, uh, de uh, Department of uh, Science and Technology. Minister of Science and Technology, actually they are nothing in Korea because in 1970, until 1970s, uh, just uh, because the Korean don't need, didn't need any R&D or whatever, it's just uh, uh, borrow the uh, US and Japan's uh, advanced uh, the, uh, uh, the product we re-engineered or I mean, uh, let's say copyright, uh, paint copyright and then make and through makings uh, improve their, uh, I mean, in production process and reducing the cost to be competitive. That's so 1970. You, okay, if you have uh, five minutes, okay. Oh, okay. That's okay. okay, pace yourself. Thank you, sorry. Uh, it's okay, fine. So, and then uh, night, after that, 1990s or 19, uh, and on, on, on the other hand, uh, we have uh, the, uh, the relationship between business and here state. Business has uh, still a very volume expansion orientation so based on 1970s. Uh, why, I mean, 19, why 1980s and 19, late 1990s that this whole crisis are, both crises are resulted from over expansion or state uh, nurturing system. Nevertheless, they continue this system. Uh, the reason is if uh, in Korea, they set free the, the businessmen, even they are very strong and they bigger and bigger, uh, Korean peoples are, or, or even the bureaucrats uh, worried about their uh, over speculations and, uh, and over expansions is just a volume oriented styles. We need a more moving toward a uh, very quality oriented, not a volume oriented. Right now we need, our economy need more this directions. The each uh, individual corporations, they just focus on profit, not a, a whole industrial system. That's the, we need the directions. So initiations, uh, that's the bureaucrats, uh, economic bureaucrats emphasize their sales, even in 1997, the crisis. After that, we, 1997, uh, we need more highly uh, reduce this kind of volume orientations of, by private corporations, and then more technology, knowledge intensive, and, and state focus on more industrial ecosystem, industrial commons. But uh, problem is still different, uh, as I told you, different uh, M uh, MOI, the Ministry of Industry and Ministry of Communications, Ministry of IT and Communications and Ministry of Science. Uh, they try to increase uh, their own department voice and influence. So they propose very similar uh, and, and developmental styles. Uh, and also, but uh, uh, this cause 
a lot of overlapping problems, uh, the proposal. Um, but uh, 2000 uh, slowly, they are adjusting each other's, their own jurisdictions uh, adjustment. And also uh, they need a horizontal, uh, horizontal and vertical coordination uh, system. Uh, so that's the Korean uh, way of uh, how they evolved. And finally, as I, I'm, I'd like to emphasize the, the, uh, in chapter nine, I'd like to generalize more uh, the developmental state like uh, Japan and Korea uh, and Taiwan uh, and China. They are not unitary state. They are not a uh, cohesive uh, single rational uh, state. They in their inside, they're more, uh, I mean, uh, elite competitions ubiquitous, in, even in their very strong uh, developmental state. Uh, and also I emphasize uh, 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 China and Japan uh, and Taiwan, I, I try to show in chapter, final chapters, uh, how they, I mean, achieved a benefit, economic benefit, uh, this kind of organizational flexibility through the Elite competitions. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> it is a. It is. It, anyway, uh, let me stop here. <laughs> Antonio. Let me get. Well, thank you, Young Ki Kwan, for the very nice presentation. <laughs> Sorry that it imposed on you. Now trying to uh, synthesize in a very rich and detailed book, you know, in uh, forty-five minutes. But I think was. It was very, it was very, uh, very challenging and uh, very, I think, provocative to all of us, you know, because that's your, I think your book is very provocative and I think uh, you're able to, to express it real well in uh, these ideas. So let me just, uh, as, as I said, I'm going to just make a few brief comments uh, because uh, Professor Kwan was very graciously uh, allowed me, you know, a copy of the, a proofread copy of his book. So I was able to read it and try to, uh, I know I have been reading about Korean development for the last uh, 20, 30 years or so, been, but uh, I had to brush up on you know, my knowledge of, uh, of Korean history and you know, 60 years of Korea industrial history and development in, uh, in a week. So I'm sorry, probably my reading and some of my comments are not gonna make justice you know, to, the, to, the, to the strength and, and the beauty of the book, but I'll, I'll, I'll do my best. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, just so this is a very magnificent book at the same time, which firmly challenges well-established political economy theories and views on developmental states, as well as the demise of the South Korea and elsewhere. I mean, it has a very strong you know, comparative component. And, uh, and I think that's one of the main strengths also of the, bo of the book, you know, as uh, Professor Kwan just mentioned lately, you know, he brings you know, other, uh, other Asian cases you know, for comparisons and also support you know, his generalization. And also propose innovative insight of alternative theoretical explanation of changes by competition among elites inside and outside the state, you know. So in a way, what he does is a very challenging thing, you know, to open up, you know, the black box of the developmental state, you know, because you see most of the explanations up here, up to now, you know, they've treated you know, the, the state as a black box. <laughs> in a way, he opens up that box, you know. Um, as he said, you know, I mean, I, I'm quoting now the book focuses on the flexible adaptability of the Korean state-led capitalism, with which uh, it has adjusted its method and strategies of development to competition among elites inside and outside the states as new challenges never met with apparent solution had continuously emerged, you know. So he does, uh, he does that very well. You know, it's a, it's a door of construction and well-researched narrative, the post to our historic evolution of the developmental state in South Korea, as the subtitle of the book, you know, states, up to our days. So it's a very, uh, has a very broad, you know, historical range, you know, in a, in a very, is a, is a, is a real tour de force on the part of Professor Kwan you know, to cover so so nicely and so so powerful you know such a huge you know period you know and he does that with a great brio uh, from the initial growth traction and sustainable development of the 1960s and 70s early 70s through the financial crisis and uh, the 70s and then globalization and he craftily weaves you know, results from a vast number of interviews and secondary sources mainly with state actors and with select economic aggregate evidence so it's really able to to build a very interesting and very compelling narrative you know which kind of supports you know, very well his, uh, his arguments. You know. Again, quoting one of the key questions that right? I just repeat and reinforce some of the question. You know, 
Continuity does not exclude changes. Rhetoric can happen by changes. So that's a key, like uh, overall general point that he makes in kind of flips, you know, the whole uh, the whole discussion about the development of states, you know, which kind of emphasizes continuity, the institutional uh, uh, dependence, etc. As he mentioned, and so he he argues, you know, I quote again, in order to better account for this dynamic change and continuity, this book brings back politics among key actors. Unlike the institutionalist scenario, actors are not unilaterally constrained by institutions. So in a way, he's giving voice you know, to the state uh, actors, and he does that very well. Um, he emphasizes the institutional adaptability to elite competition for such sustained economic growth, not only in Korea, but also in other East Asian uh, states. I'll finish the quote. Uh, as, in, as I mentioned, as I repeat, you know, his focus on change and in change by competition as the title of the book you know, states very well. Moreover, Kwan calls our attention for the importance of a change in the, in the mindset of the developmentalist elites, uh, only way for them to see new and emerging problems, financialization, globalization, and crisis, differently and create innov innovative solutions. Now, I mean, again, quoting from the book, the process of political contest is not an apparent single direction of self reinforcement, but a more complex and uncertain process by political interaction. Uh, the book emphasizes the political interaction in which actors reinterpret their preference strategies and available resources and feasible options while they acknowledge the significant uncertainty that key actors face. Uh, he, he talks about ideas, but he has a very you know, unique and specific you know, uh, concept of ideas. And you know, he talks about actors' ideas in the practical context. And more importantly, we emphasize ideas are contested. So it's not that ideas are like a drive, you know, they are like deterministic ideas would drive, you know, developmentalism, in, in, like in several other accounts about idea, the role of ideas. You know. He puts ideas in the context of practice and how they are context, contested among the authors and that creates a very dynamic you know, driver for change. You know. uh, of course, you know, as you mentioned, uh, in, the, in the heavy chemical industry you know, period, you know, developmental policy maybe get crisis, which you need to be reinterpreted. You know. And so quoting again from the book, incoherence and competition among key actors, particularly state elites, are more the norm than the exception because they interpret the same crisis differently with different perspectives and priorities. Thus, elite competition contributes to economic development by improving institutional adaptability in the continuously changing context of domestic and international political economy. So I suppose you know, the question he asks is you know, what are extremely correct and is extremely enlightening. How does it play out and what drives the elites to compete? You know? So the argument that uh, he, he, he poses is uh, in quoting for the book again, in order for collective deliberation to be workable over time, key actors should have vested interests for which they are willing to invest their time and energy in policy decision-making. And continuing conflict, conflicts of ideas among key actors, such as different bureaucratic ministries are not a, ma a matter of simple puzzle solving, but involve vested interest in power. And I think that's a very important point because there'll be a lot of discussion, a lot of, uh, so our World Bank type and all reports who like it's not gonna have been talking about discovery and puzzle solving, but they don't have a they don't have a, uh, an engine behind them. And, and I think a Professor Kwan is able to establish a good engine in the vested interests in power that these elites have, you know, and that's in a way gives the dynamics and the motivation for them to continue you know, evolving and continue contesting you know, ideas. Uh, quoting uh, again from the book, you know, continuity of development patterns, say state led uh, Developmentalist in Korea is neither by institutional stickiness to change or repetition of a taking for granted mindset, as he mentioned, but continuity by changes, changing the existing practice and finding new policy or strategy. Um, so, does this book you know, claim that in order to better account for continuity changes in the economic system, politics among elites inside and out, outside states should be considered? You know? So, that's a very, and I think it's a very interesting, you know, uh, so an analytical statement you know, that uh, can be used you know, for us to explore you know, this uh, similar process in other developmental states either fail or successful. And I think that's in a way he subverts you know, a lot of the, of, of the existing theoretical analytical frameworks you know, to understand you know, continuity and change in the states and also the possibilities of change you know, that occurs. Um, overall, the evidence selected and presented convincingly supports the claims made throughout the book. Uh, the comparative analysis with the other Asian development states further solidify the alternative theoretical argument. I see briefly argued towards the end of his presentation. Um, however, now will be my first, you know, uh, my first comment. You'd be interested to have a pair of comparison of similar environmental challenges, no financial crisis, globalization, structural challenges like initial 
export growth specialization in all the intensive industry. Now, throughout the book, you know, there's several cases comparison. We have industrial either either about the responses to go to uh, globalization, but they're not really a pair comparison. Will be interesting to have them together at some point. So that's one of the comments that I'll have. The, the industry case are richly contextualized, you know, and it covers mainly electronics, but also other sectors and contribute to different parts of the argument. However, it will be interesting, again, to have a pair of comparison of the same industrial trajectory in different uh, Asian developmental states. And I've seen how these bureaucracies play when they talk about the similar, when they try to develop similar industries now. Uh, perhaps in my view, the promise that's not fully delivered in the discussion of the ideas uh, is, is the in a discussion is a discussion of ideas, competition, and contests in politics outside the states and their effects on political politics of state elites. You know, I know the uh, sort of the, the 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 claim is though that he's going to be looking at politics. Or, uh, I mean, of actors uh, inside and outside the state. You know, I mean, uh, I didn't get to see much of the voice of the of the elite. You know, of the actors outside the state. You know, I mean, the, of course, the the elephant in the room there are the chai balls. Uh, in, and in the same vein, the chat both nature and identity are stylized and diversification and volume expansion maximizers. So I, 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 I imagine all that Professor Kwan is, as, as he mentioned right at the beginning of his talk, you know, he's moving to a more historical uh, exploration of uh, Korean uh, developmentalists. And I think it is probably one of the areas what I'm sure that, uh, that he's going to be exploring, you know, where do the chai balls come from, what's in the nature of the identity, you know, why, why the Chai Bowls are developing in the, in the first place. So that's always a question I had about Korea. Uh, the characterization of Chai Bowls in large firms in the, in the book you know, sometimes is sometimes fuzzy and used interchangeably. So it's sometimes not clear whether you're talking about Chai Bowl group or some uh, individual large corporations. And because of the, of the volume or diversification argument is a, key, is a keystone piece you know, for the argument. You know, it, that's what makes it a little confusing and clouds some of the claims. You know. It's also unclear to me why some chai balls break from the pack to be all the apparent explanation given that they have a herd behavior and simply follow changes in state incentives. No. Uh, throughout you know, the, the narrative, you, know, you mentioned that uh, some chai balls, you know, they, like Samsung, you know, they became more innovative and you know, invested in R&D. Uh, on the other hand, the Dayu, you know, they, 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 they chose you know, to keep you know, the old mentality of uh, volume and diversification and they eventually you know, went bankrupt, but it's not clear what uh, what motivated, what, what drove one to one direction or the other. So, I mean, the way Chai Balls have no agents whatsoever in the film project, you know, and that's something I'd like to see more perhaps in the next project, you know. How do the outside actors, mainly the Chai Balls, is the, I think one characteristic of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the history in, in Korea is that you don't have a civil society, you know, until much later, which started playing a role, but also it, although it, it uh, emerges, you know, in the scenario, but it doesn't play any significant role in this story. Uh, that's a general problem of contemporary political economy. The business is not taken seriously. Often it's not only a problem that child balls in Korea, but you don't see business having a voice, you know, analytically speaking, beyond a simplistic and project to rational behavior. So and that's my criticism of not only the book, but uh, the overall, uh, overall program of a uh, comparative political economy where business is seen just like an object, you not know, to be an object of the of state policy, but uh, and, and you, you, you're suggesting you know, to move beyond that in terms of bringing you know, uh, the politics of contest uh, among you know, out, uh, out of the state actors, but uh, I, don't, I didn't really see much of that contest among you know, the out, out of state actors and how they interact with the state. You know. uh, from a historical perspective, which I, I'm sure that you're gonna address in your future project, as you said, is already underway. Why are the chair balls allowed to grow in the first place? Uh, where there are any thoughts about state enterprise. And that's, of course, a, is a very Brazilian commentary, you know, because as the Brazilian military dictatorships, you know, they, they built, you know, a, a whole host of uh, state enterprise. You know, my question, I wonder if you could uh, briefly comment, you know, why there, no, there was there any thinking about building state enterprise in, in, uh, in Korea, why they, why they chose to have the Chai Bowls, you know, as uh, preferred partners and not build their own state enterprise, you know. Uh, a next, uh, next point is uh, the president's decision, the, the several presidents and the dictators' decision making reasons and drivers. The principle and the framework, they're not uh, always clear, except they're always pragmatic. So sometimes, you know, the, the narrative lets me think, you know, that the presidents are too uh, functionalist in a way, you know. I mean, they're convinced, you know, they are like uh, convinced by the different agents, but the, so we don't really quite understand what the principle is doing there, except responding, you know, to the, the winning the winning uh, 
actor in the contest and all. Um, finally, I would also like to, uh, to, to have a look at, uh, to read more about and a more engaged theoretical discussion on the liberty of democracy, you know, which to bring in the final chapter and how the change in the competition uh, theoretical framework could be contributed you know, to, uh, to the whole literature on discursive democracy and recursive learning by monitoring you. You kind of touch upon that, but I think, uh, I, I think it'd be very interesting you know, if you could develop further you know, that uh, engagement in, uh, from a more theoretical perspective, which I, which I think there's a lot of contribution you know, to, to advance you know, this whole literature the, from the theoretical perspective. You know. uh, finally, one who wish that Latin American case brought into the discussion for the book had greater relief, granularity, and death, again, beyond the herd mentality or blindly following ISI and then the Washington consensus. See, like the Latin American case, you know, when you bring them, they, they, they look very, you know, stylized, too much stylized, you know, for, of course, for Latin American observers. And I think it's, it's part of our challenge, you know, as, as, uh, as we're doing here, you know, having you to talk to us, you know, for us to develop you know, more uh, comparisons, which can really take into account you know, the, 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 the granularity and the, the specificities of, of each case in both in Latin America and in Asia. You know. For example, there are interesting parallel events for comparison, one that the kind of, uh, that comes, came out in my reading you know, when you talk about the South Korea's you now heavy chemical industry drive, you know, which occurred about the same time in Brazil with the second national development plan, which was also a failure you know, for different reasons. But I, these, for example, would be events that will be uh, very suitable for for like a for a pair of comparison between Brazil and Korea in developmental you know, events. Uh, in the end, you know, just to conclude, you know, this book uh, must be a, it is a must read for Brazilian and Latin American students of the developmentalists and will certainly contribute to a new understanding of the trajectory of a de developmentalists away from the analysis center on abstract economic doctrines, which is which is most of the discussion in Brazil is very centered by, I mean, it's driven by economists. Uh, vague ideological preference, you know, there's also a whole literature with kind of just based on uh, ideological uh, abstractions, you know, in uh, like comparison of the ideologies or you define class or fraction class interests. So I think uh, the analytical and theoretical framework that you that you bring out in your analysis of South Korea, you know, I think it would be very useful for us, you know, to, uh, to re-understand, you know, what, or to understand and you the trajectory of developmentalism in Brazil, you know, the failures and the problems and the weaknesses and then have a, a better no comparison with South Korea and the, and the Asian experiences. Uh, so I thank you for, for the opportunity you know, for giving these comments and apologize you know, if I didn't make justice you know, to the book, which is much richer than I was able to, to pass you know, through my comments here because you know, given the, the brief time, but I really enjoyed reading the book and I, I strongly recommend to everyone when it comes out, you know, everyone should purchase it and read it and, and make use of it you know, to interpret it in Brazil in Latin American developmentalism. Okay, so these are my comments. I don't know, I, before I think uh, perhaps for, for second one want to react, I think uh, for, for the sake of time, you know, I'd like to open the floor for some questions. Uh, so if you have a question, I think Moises is like uh, organizing that, raise your hand or, and then Moises is gonna open the floor and uh, perhaps I think we have time for two or three, four questions. And then now uh, you have a, uh, Professor Kwan to uh, just give some final comments so not to overcharge him too much. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, I don't know how many people do have questions. I have one question and then the, uh, Cristiano and who else? Who else is going to make a question? Rodrigo, Rodrigo Cristiano. Karen. Karen, Rodrigo, Cristiano. Karen also, okay. So we've Anyone got else? four questions here. Anyone else would like have questions? Just let's put one more if there's one more. Yeah, okay. can raise your hand. Okay, so we've got four questions. Well, my, my, so it's me, Cristiano, Rodrigo, and Karen. Uh, my question is, uh, it's about this uh, competition. It seems that the main argument of your book is uh, the competition between elites uh, within the government. And uh, you mentioned that uh, it's not, um, it's an endogenous change and this is clear, uh, uh, but it, you also mentioned that it, it would have some relationship with uh, 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 discursive uh, dis institutionalism from uh, uh, Vivian Schmidt. And my question is, uh, how did you, um, how did you get to analyze this uh, uh, competition? Uh, I mean, uh, decision-making process and uh, 
And also, uh, did it reflect in terms of uh, ideational differences? Uh, because it seems that uh, I, I think it was very interesting. EPB was kind of stuck in the ISI, but uh, MCI was was really the key actor in the export orientation change. So I, I, if you could give us some more comments on on this uh, uh, elite competition, and uh, uh, just one uh, another point would be these. Uh, 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 it seems that a, a business, uh, what about the business elite connections uh, within this competition? Who connected to whom in, in I mean, uh, MCI versus what, what parts of business and uh, uh, EPB uh, connected to which, which type uh, of business? I don't know if you want to, how would you prefer, uh, do you prefer together uh, two questions and then uh, answer and more two questions because I think maybe four questions. I think for the more. sake of time, it's better to collect and then uh, one will just select a few questions and to answer. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> because uh, uh, otherwise it's going to be too late and also give him the freedom. Yeah. To, uh, I think it's important for him to receive the questions and then uh -huh. he'll try to answer and then he'll create an opportunity for us to uh, to invite him again or to, to finalize it. Yeah, <laughs> okay, okay. Then... Christian. My turn. Okay. Well, um, you know, very interesting ideas and, and presentation. Very nice presentation. I think um, this topic is, uh, uh, I mean, we appreciate it a lot because there's a lot of talk on developmental state here in, in Brazil, but I'm afraid we are kind of stuck in 1990s and early 2000s uh, bibliography. So I think your book is very much welcome. And I, I, I also would like to highlight Antonio's uh, comments, which help it to, to, to stimulate our interest. I'm, I, I mean, I'm really looking forward to, the, to reading the book. Uh, but in terms of questions, I think also my, my questions somehow will, uh, are connected to Antonio's comments and And Moisés, uh, I, I, I thought your point on elite competition and the politics involved in it is very compelling. It's the kind of uh, uh, approach that we are trying to, 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 to work on here also, the role of politics in explaining all different kinds of institutional processes in terms of development, uh, business state, uh, relationships, and, and, and so on. Uh, but my, my, I mean, I, I got curious, and maybe that's basically also what, uh, one point that Moisés made. I'm curious about um, the competition for the relationship with private sector. Uh, I mean, I'd like to hear a little bit more on that, uh, on the sign of the empirical part. Uh, methodologically speaking, uh, I, I, I'm also, uh, I got curious about... Um, Uh, I mean, I understand that your work is based on a, a kind of narrative of the processes that were going on at each decade, basically this very historical institutionalist uh, in terms of, of dividing the, the periods in, in terms of the decades. But I'd like to know if you, if you work on more specific variables to analyze uh, these relationships, if you could talk a little bit about that. How, what were you looking at when you look at the processes that you're discussing, uh, specifically within, uh, within the state, but also uh, between state and, and private actors. So basically that's it and thanks again. So that's my turn now. Uh, firstly, I'd like to, to thank you for the, the very interesting presentation you gave. And I have two really quick questions. They are moved by my curiosity and that need to compare a little bit what, uh, the data and information you gave about South Korean states with the Brazilian state. Uh, first of all, uh, when you're talking about uh, elite competition, uh, you give a very rich and detailed description of uh, the relations between 
uh, the, the bureaucratic elites in South Korea. But uh, in a way, I'm, I'm very interested in the relations between these elites and the business elite. So in a way, uh, is it possible that the competition you describe is related to some kind of cooperation within the states against uh, regulatory capture, for example? Because in Brazil, uh, one very big problem is how these relations uh, really quickly they transform themselves in uh, the capture of the state by business elites. And the other thing is that uh, some two Brazilian scholars, uh, Aldo Mosacchio and Sergio Lazzarini, they, they argue that uh, there's a change in the, the attempts of uh, development of states in all around the world, but also in Brazil uh, between uh, their role as owners, you know, business owners, from uh, first uh, the demiurge role that Peter Evans described to uh, a role of a major shareholder in big companies and important sectors to become a minor shareholder. Uh, how do you describe, how, how do you think about this uh, relation, these roles of the state in corporate governance? Uh, in South Korea, that's a. Uh, my question is about how the South Korean state uh, relates to the ownership of companies. Is that such a path? You no, know, changing from a demiurge to a minor shareholder, for example. These are my questions and many things. Karen. Uh, so, first of all, congratulations, my goodness, that is just a massive undertaking and very, very impressive. Um, so my question is, sometimes you have Brazilian economists saying that the um, massive capital investment in the, during the military period was necessary, was sort of necessary to have growth later. And so my question is whether the EPB strategy on the heavy industries was a necessary foundation to be able to launch the um, export oriented and knowledge oriented development that you discuss later. Okay, Juan, the floor is yours. You can pick and choose whatever questions you want to answer. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let me answer slowly. Some some questions because sometimes let, let me raise. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, the, make it clear that what the question is. Anyway, uh, first, uh, I would like to uh, thank you for Antonio's comment, and that's a very aching and sharply, sharply, sharp, sharp uh, criticism. I totally accept uh, the, uh, yes, yes it is. Uh, I try to, I mean, uh, put in the, the, uh, the jabbers or business side, their ideas, their response, I did, but uh, still it is not sufficient. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, let me talk later still about this. Uh, I mean, the many, uh, at least Amstan and many other uh, developer statists or political economists in Korea about Korean uh, economy uh, emphasize, I mean, focus on the, this kind of uh, uh, the uh, private uh, enterprise businessmen's uh, uh, the situations. But uh, I try to debunk <laughs> more. Mm -hmm. You know, state, uh, that's not my focus. Nevertheless, uh, I mean, I try to put in the, the business, private businessman's uh, response uh, and try to gain their influence uh, in the critical point, particularly in as, as, uh, as Lafa La, 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 La uh, asked uh, and, and also the Christiana uh, tried to say, uh, mm -hmm. The elite outside the state, 
uh, I try to put in the, this kind of relationship uh, critical, at critical point. Let me say about a little bit more. Anyway, uh, first, uh, let me continue with the first thing is, uh, as I understand the uh, uh, La, pa La, La, Peda, La Peda's question is the, uh, how can I figure out uh, the uh, discursive institutionalism with the ideas, uh, the competitions, uh, how the Korea found uh, the, the, the MCI export oriented uh, industrializations from the, the existing ISI. Uh, first thing is uh, I'd like to emphasize uh, very practical process interactions, uh, not only between uh, their competitors inside their own uh, their own, uh, I mean, another state elite, but also with their own uh, industrialists and also their own, uh, let me emphasize first, this is through the practice. Idea is not complete set of theory. I would like to emphasize idea is, means more key actors, current confident, confident uh, ideas. So for example, in even uh, in 1961 or 1960, MCI does not have any confidence uh, about the uh, exporting is possible, particularly industrial product. Korea can export industrial product. It is almost impossible. They believe so. But uh, MCI tried to, at first, uh, the first problem is the uh, foreign capital shortages. In 1962, after coup 1961, they tried to uh, build up uh, industrialization, but they don't have any money, any capitals. They, they borrow just the US uh, A's and they utilize that. But they had a big problems, uh, this shortages because the US, I mean, does not like uh, the <laughs> military coup dictator. So there's uh, some kind of, and also they doubt the, the present Park's real intentions. What is their military intentions? So, at that times, uh, they try to just uh, happen to, uh, I mean, encourage just to make money uh, on anything, whatever anything. And also, so they try to happen to find a small, I mean, fly veneer uh, export materials, just a very simple uh, uh, manufacturing just to borrow the, the, the wood and then cuttings and flying the wood, you know, and then export, make money, very small, but they got a confidence. Oh, it may be, it may, may work. And then they just the industrialist figure out, I mean, push, push. Every time it's very detailed, time scheduled, uh, and then, and then, one year and two years later, they got a one uh, hundred, uh, let's say, uh, one, 100, uh, uh, one, one, one billion, one, one, uh, just a one million dollars export by industrial product. They got a hooray. <laughs> and after that, they got a more confident and wow, that's the, my original, I mean, our own cause. And they got more powers. EP, EPB did not have opposed that or such like that. And we, we cannot do this and we cannot put in the money like that. Uh, so, but uh, competitions and also practical ideas in, in, through the practice, 
they got some real genuine confident ideas, which is a very different uh, ideas of the uh, economic theory, complete mm -hmm. set of Keynesianism or export oriented whatever. Uh, that's the very different things. So, uh, and, and let's say, I don't know, <laughs> coming back maybe. And, and second uh, thing is that also, this is very important thing is that outside, maybe I think it, question two or three, outside the state, elite, outside state, business, business the relationship between state elite and um, business elite, private. Yeah, in the critical point, they got us very competing each other. First, in early stages of the establishment of development state in Korea, yeah, the industrialist or capitalist, uh, I mean, they hooked up the, the, the state. But uh, the, the military coup, after military coup, they tried to get any legitimacy, then just to castize. I mean, the uh, whole problem is our corruptions is that's the industrial capitalist. <laughs> uh, at that time, more, more, morally, uh, mostly commercial uh, capitalist. And they jailed. And, 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 but uh, they, they got some kind of compromise. Uh, the jabber also tried to, you know, they have to, one, on one side, they have to survive. I mean, the victimized in, in this political uh, situations, they try to escape victims. And on, on the other hand, they, the only one way is how to contribute this national prosperity. That's the way of their own, their own uh, voice or their legitimacy. They changed a lot. That's the President Box did, you know. They made the deals, and if you contribute this uh, uh, nationalization, national industrialization, then you gotta leave <laughs> political or jurist. Uh, I, I mean, uh, jurist. Uh, I mean, problems uh, and corruptions, uh, sins, crimes. So they they got some compromise, and and secondly. Another big issues as you 1980s and after that they got some competition. Still, Korea is capitalism, private uh, countries, not a communist countries. So, uh, SOE, so, uh, st uh, state-owned enterprise, is very small. Uh, you know, instigate the private companies, industrialize, but uh, some kind of guided and and put in the monies and uh, make uh, uh, the, the risk investment, uh, you know, constructive ways. That's the so-called Ellis Armstead's reciprocity, uh, discipline, give it subsidy and incentive guide, and then uh, make constructive way of investment. So otherwise, you know, I mean, exclude the next round, uh, get a, any kind of subsidies or whatever things. And there is comes a very high uh, performance standard. If you hit this standard, then you can get a next round, uh, any other new industries, any other new subsidies, <laughs> something like that. So for the, uh, Jabbers or corporations, they got a, they have competitions, each other's, uh, to get a, a more a subsidies or more support from the state elite. This is the uh, uh, President Bach's era, but it, but after that they got to change the law. In 1997, a uh, big crisis. At that time, even 1980s, there was a Korea big crisis. After at that situation, the uh, business elite also offered their own. I mean, how Korea should go 
uh, where should go? Their argument is a free market. State, don't intervene us. We are going your own way. That's their purpose. We are free countries. We are capital con capitalist countries. We are not socialism. So don't intervene us. No more. That's the better for economic efficiency. We know better than you. That's their argument. But problem is, I told you, there is another competition. Uh, even in 1997, economic bureaucrat uh, and, and many other uh, the uh, people's idea very worried about. On, on one hand, uh, the uh, bureaucrats uh, over uh, authoritarian style intervention is problematic. Over investment is also problem. On the other hand, uh, the set free free market is the jabbers dominate whole other small econ small companies, and also more problem is they do not invest constructive ways. Just to, you know, how can I say the <laughs> the speculations invest in. Uh, the land or, or apartment or, or not a constructive ways. And also in 1997, whole early 1990s, uh, bureaucrats propose and pushes, we have to go no more, I mean, we have to go the more uh, quality oriented, high knowledge intensive, technology intensive economies, not a no, I mean, no more volume, just the expansion, I mean, size matters. It does not work anymore in, in the world competitions. You know, uh, this is the proposal to uh, how to contribute national prosperity in uh, international competitions. Korean think always uh, justify their own uh, economic growth in the competition of international uh, economic situations, other countries, and, and Japan and Taiwan. And so who better solutions, who offer better solutions? That's the kind of competitions between state elite and also business elite. Business elite always justify their voice. We made contributions. Recently, you know, Samsung man, uh, Gun Hee Lee passed away. Have you seen the news? Uh, he is the president of the Samsungs. Uh, maybe the day before yesterday, he had a, we had a funeral of the Samsung man's uh, Samsung president. Uh, whole news of the in Korea. Uh, oh, he. I mean, he, we pray, we reflect upon uh, <laughs> him. How contribute our pros national prosperity in competition of. Uh, you know, this international uh, economy. But, you know, in uh, Samsung turned their uh, semiconductor uh, industry, that's because uh, state, you know, state support strongly this way. But uh, still, until 1996, they had a steer over expansion, volume-based expansionism, and also on one hand, slowly technology oriented. They mixed up 1990s. So, but uh, they justified in, in open space, public, public space, always this is our national uh, way. But uh, they compete each other. That's the nine, even 1997 uh, in, in the crisis and also 2000 still, we have uh, this kind of discourse. Mm. And also, let's see, uh, I don't know, uh, Karen, Karen's uh, HEC, do I believe HECI is necessary uh, for the national economic development? <laughs> he, he, that's the very, very serious and uh, very problematic. Let's see. 
it depends uh, very complicated. Let me give you a, a very the other ways answer maybe maybe uh, helpful. Island don't need does not need you know island small countries but are very highly advanced very their developmental growth way is very different. They attracted you know the highly targeted very selectively targeted uh, foreign multinational corporations. But on, on the other hand, uh, Brazil is a big country. They need uh, some kind of forward and backward integrations, industrial linkages. As I told you, the economic uh, system, economic ecosystem, industrial commons need, uh, uh, you know, Holy 2010 uh, in US, there's a lot of debate about this. Neoliberals in US uh, and neoclassic economists and a lot of many, uh, let's say, uh, White House uh, secretary, economic secretary, why we need, a, we need a, a manufacturing? We just need a more, <laughs> profit making uh, service or something like that. They say very very excellent uh, examples. Many people like uh, neoliberals, Bhagavati uh, and many uh, professor, economic professors say, making money is making money. Potato chip, $100, semiconductor, Microchip is one hundred dollars. The same. Why do I have to treat it differently? My answer: We should treat it differently because the industrial company maybe profit is one hundred dollars. The same thing, but the external effect, side effect, collective national collective capability is different which the potato chip making and semiconductor or microchip making. Sure. For example, I mean, you don't need any example. The American problem is they, they confess right now. For example, I mean, MIT and Harvard uh, business schools that they conducted the 19, uh, let's see. That's the, the books, MIT papers. This is also MIT papers, the uh, research. And also, let me introduce this. This is Harvard Business uh, Team's uh, the issues, 2012. They made a lot of empirical uh, studies. After that, they conclude uh, US has big problems. As I told you, the figure uh, to like that. The reason is, you know, uh, through outsourcing or easy flow, the manufacturers, they free market uncoordinated, just, just go outside. Then the big problem is they, in the world, the best uh, innovative idea comes from US university. We, we deny that. The problem is, if you are MIT excellent professor and MIT intelligent young uh, student got some ideas, product, innovat innovations, break it through, okay, great. Then, you know, innovation means just the one, not like that, very back and forth. It, is, can, it can be commercialized or not. Innovation means, uh, new ideas, R&D from the, uh, in, in the laboratory, then prototype and a lot of very small uh, commercialization process and industries back and forth and mass production process and marketizing, all these things, you need a lot of external industry commons, like uh, many skills, many excellent engineers, many, testing uh, facilities, 
and also, you know, mass medical scientist does not make any commercialized product. We need a lot of this kind of process, you know. So, U.S. problem is uh, they diagnosed. If even if intelligent uh, uh, the uh, digital camera, the about digital camera, intelligent MIT student got, got some kind of innovations. They have a problems of how to test it can work or not. So after that, they made small companies based based on the venture capital. Then they selling these companies to make money. Why? Or go to the Japan, go to Korea. Why? Because they have a, they need a lot of part suppliers and other testing areas. Right now, they are locating in Japan and Korea. So I'm free. I'm I make money. So, so I go to the theirs, not here in US. That's the problems for US right now. After that, Obama, two, after 2008 crisis, uh, after 2009, these uh, teams, MIT university teams and indigenous teams, uh, Harvard business teams, they, they develop new, uh, uh, I mean, strategies. And in 2014, uh, they made a, a new act the recently, you know, making USA, put in the search, search find out. Uh, making USA means that and manufacturing USA, or I, I forgot, manufacturing USA or making USA. That's kind of a, a confess of failure of market failure. They need state coordinations. They need more nurturing uh, industrial ecosystem or industrial commons strategically, but still very uh, short and limitations. We need to uh, take a look at more. So if I answer, Brazil need uh, uh, HCI? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, probably I think it yet right now, current, I have no little ideas. Uh, the current uh, situations in Brazil, maybe I think the uh, like Brazil kind of a big uh, countries, they need a more, not island stars, more, you know, industrial linkages, which is the, uh, I think industrial linkages uh, are based on the idea of, uh, let's see, the Friedrich List, uh, you know, uh, his, uh, the national, uh, national political economy. Uh, his book is very excellent, uh, say that we need, uh, I mean, more linkages. That's for the uh, very different ways, slightly different ways, uh, uh, Adam Smith. Uh, I, I, I think the, uh, his excellent idea. Okay. okay. Well, thanks a lot, Yong Kyo. Well, uh, I don't know if anyone had uh, any rejoinder questions, but I think it's late for everyone. And Juan also said it, he didn't sleep well, so he also, you, we need to sleep here and you need to sleep there. <laughs> so once again, I want to thank you very much. I think it was a very good uh, discussion, a very great presentation. With, uh, as, as you see, you know, it generated a lot, of, uh, a lot of questions, a lot of discussions from us. And I hope you can continue you know, this uh, conversation and. Uh, eventually turn uh, some of these discussions about comparisons into actual research products of doing actual comparison. I'm sure this will happen as, as we have this discursive deliberation among us, which put in practice exactly what you just said. So thanks again for your, for your kindness you know, of having us and uh, speaking to us you know, uh, this time. And uh, I hope you, you, you come back you know, uh, with, uh, with further questions and further discussions in the near future. And okay. also want to thank you know uh, the, my co-organizers Rodrigo and, and Cristiano and of course Moisés for putting it together all the technical and organizational skills uh, at its best <laughs> and also uh, all the people who attended us uh, who didn't make any questions but I think uh, Moisés oh well, before I forget Moisés if you wanna if you wanna receive you know information about the next uh, seminar 
Please yeah, fill that, out you know, in, the, in the chat, you know, there is a form there. That's you right. Fill yes. out with your name and uh, email, then you send information about the yeah. next seminar, which probably will happen at the last week of November. No, I will. Yes, I'm just copying it and sending it again. Yeah. That's yeah, so it's in the chat if you wanna if you wanna receive that information, and then if you also refuse, you know, with your colleagues. I also want to thank Karen and all the all the participants for the questions and the debates. And uh, mm -hmm. thank you, everyone. And have a good night and have a good day for you, Quan. Okay. Thank you yeah. very much, That's Professor. Nice. It's okay. it's Thanks. great, and I think there is uh, uh, now you you you've given us so fresh perspectives on how to renew these comparative studies between. The experiences of Latin America and uh, South Korea. Uh, just, just make a very quick comment. Uh, here, the common sense is uh, the so-called informed common sense is that the, Co the Korean development of state is something very cohesive, is uh, very rational oriented, very unified, and you've given us a, an entirely different perspective. Uh, just really great. Thank yeah, you. you flip our mind. So now we had to ponder yeah. all that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Good night, everyone. Bye. Have a nice bye. day. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. bye. Thank you. Bye.